All right, welcome everybody to another Pepperstone Learn It Live webinar series. Today we've got an exciting topic and that topic is three scalping strategies and indicators for part-time traders. My name's Thomas Atkinson from FX Evolution and as always I'm joined by Tyron Navella, but he'll be here in just a few minutes. Basically today we've got a whole bunch of things to cover and obviously scalping strategies are something that we all start with as traders but there's a big difference between being good at scalping and obviously being a bit of a novice at scalping and some of that is breaking down a lot of your trading systems to simplified ideas and systems that make sense over the longer term. Before we get into today's video, obviously I need to do a risk warning just to let everybody know that the information contained in this video is of course generic in nature and for educational purposes only. The information does not take into account your personal objectives, financial situation or needs. And this information is not to be construed as an offer, recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell or participate in the markets during this webinar or video. So quick shout out, we've obviously got the Telegram groups. We're popping in a little bit of information in the room soon, just about Pepperstone's Telegram group and the daily feeds that come out. And of course, FX Evolutions and, you, and Pepperstone's YouTube channels. If you wanna check those out, you can search FX Evolution or Pepperstone in YouTube and definitely consider subscribing if you want a copy, of course, of this webinar that we're doing tonight. We'll be uploading it tomorrow. So what are we gonna be covering today? Well, we'll be taking a look at three key indicators that we can use on MetaTrader 5, what they are, when we wanna use them, how we wanna use them. Then we'll be taking a look at live chart analysis of the major Forex pairs. We'll be doing a bit of a dollar index look as that's one of the most interesting charts at the moment. And we're talking about how we analyze that into a scalping day trading system. And also if you wanna be a bit of a part-time trader and put even less time into the charts, how you can consider it from a swing based trading process and then we'll be going on with scalping strategies on smaller time frames and of course our live q a with our team just make sure there's a few people out there that say they cannot hear it should be pretty clear if you are having problems and you've come in through the web browser please make sure that you just log out log back in and you should have sound so what types of news events do we want to be looking for? Well, it's very important. We always bring this up. Right now, any of the central bank kind of information, what I mean by central banks is Reserve Bank of New Zealand, uh, of course, the Fed themselves in the US or anything like that. They're all going to be key bits of information that we need to be very careful for if we're intraday trading or we're scalping. So make sure you get an economic calendar. There's plenty of them out there. Definitely search in Google economic calendar Forex or economic calendars in general, and you'll pull up a whole bunch of information and you can set them to your time. So you'll need that every single time and you'll have to check it pretty much before you even place a trade. You'll have to check it every day to make sure you're aware of what's coming out. As most traders will make that mistake at some point, they'll be in a trade, something will happen that's incredibly volatile and we've all been there before. And then you go, you get left scratching with your head saying, what the hell just happened to my scalp that was up five pips and now negative 30? You do not want that. Which trading pairs are best to start with? Another question we get asked all the time. Now, it does come down to what you wanna do and what you wanna achieve from your trades. But in general, if we want to scalp and we want to day trade, we really wanna be sticking to US dollar majors such as odd US dollar, euro US dollar, US dollar yen, pound US dollar, et cetera. And of course, gold, gold US dollar, gold odd, all of those types of things are quite good. We can also go with major crosses like Euro Pound, Euro Yen. Really what you're looking for is high liquidity trading that's been around for a long time and has a huge amount of volume or trade throughout it. And that's very important indeed. What other things do we want? Well, we want to decide what type of trader we want to be. Are we going to be a scalper? Are we going to be a day trader? Or are we going to be a swing trader? So a lot of people will start with scalper, they'll move into day trading, and then they might even eventually end up in swing trading. We'll be talking about why that is throughout this webinar as well. Swing trading is actually one of the most underutilized, really good use of time for part-time traders. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at each one of them and actually talking about the different strategies you can use in the live markets. So if we're a part-time trader and we're looking at scalping, or day trading, how are we going to pick the best time for us? One of the things that we can always do 
is we can come in 30 minutes to one hour before a market session opens. So make sure you know when, of course, the European markets or British market opens. And that's, of course, the London session is as well known. The Asian sessions start and when that kind of has become a very, very popular time around that 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time is always good. And then we've got, of course, the US session open as well. If you come in around 30 minutes to one hour before those sessions, you generally have a much better time of it in terms of being able to spot great intraday and scalping trades before they happen and focus on the pairs during that session. So for London, we'd be looking at pound and euro pairs. For, of course, US open, we'd be looking at potentially indices. We'd also be looking at, of course, some commodities and US dollar pairs in general. And for the Asian session, we'd be looking at odd, and yen pairs overall. So they're the types of things that you want to think about when you think about scalping and day trading. You're only going to have a certain amount of time. So let's make that time smart. Which days are we going to pick? Well, one of the things that usually happens is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday are the most traded days of the week. Monday, when we think about it, when Monday Asian session is open, have we actually seen a London open yet or a US open? We haven't. We don't have clear direction from the market. So everybody always says, well, which days would you trade? Well, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday would be easily the best days of the week to trade because you have the most amount of volume out there, the most amount of eyes on the charts, and the most amount of clear direction given from all of the markets being open and that have had their allowed time to trade. Remember, what can look like maybe a bullish hammer or a shooting star during the Asian session can completely reverse on the daily by the time the US session's over. Things happen very quickly in these markets. I'm sure we're all aware of that. Yeah. I yeah. think very yeah, they're very important. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm on. Hopefully, you can able to hear me now. Probably the important thing there as well is on Tuesday, that's the first time that you actually get a daily candle close for the week. So that's Very the true. first real indication that um, you've got the daily candle on Tuesday morning after the New York session is closed. And that's the first real indication of three market opens that are going to give us a direction for the week. Absolutely. Once we've got the direction, we can then start to break it down. The other thing that we can then decide is whether we actually end up wanting to go with swing trading. So you might begin with scalping and day trading, and obviously they're very similar kinds of styles, but swing trading is more of that hands-off approach where you come in, you check the charts maybe one to two times per day, and you're actually only going to be doing around 30 minute to one hour of analysis. We'll go through why that is throughout our analysis tonight. Then we also want to look for those daily closes, as Ty said. So it really eliminates the Monday so much when you're looking at swing trading. And of course, you can target again the major currencies, commodities and indices. So how do we do this, Ty? Well, one of the things that we like to do as scalpers, day traders or swing traders is the top down approach. We talk about this almost on a weekly basis during these webinars and we do it for a good reason. And that is that a novice trader will usually only look at a few time frames. A more experienced trader will look and understand the direction and the psychology of the market through multiple timeframes to hone the skills, to hone the synergies, and then bring it all together to get you a higher statistical chance of success. And that's what we're really doing here when we're doing technical analysis and we're trading the markets. We're trying to find high statistical chances of success. So we can start with, of course, the highest time frame. That may be that if we're looking at a 15 minute chart, we may start with a four hour chart and break it down from there, down until we get to the 15 minute and five minute charts. We then wanna recognize whether it's a trending or range bound market. And of course, we can also use lines, bars and candle charts. Don't always use candle charts. We'll talk about that. So we use this slide as well quite a lot, which is basically that we wanna understand whether the market is up or whether the market is down. You can do that by understanding price, or you can do that by using a simple indicator we will be talking about today, which is moving averages. You can kind of use something like a 20 exponential moving average and a 50 exponential moving average to give you a little bit of a hack on whether things are trending up or down. And when they cross each other, you could effectively say, well, that's up or down. We'll be talking about a more, probably a better approach to that. But overall, yeah, price action is the more advanced method. And the easier method is, of course, moving average. So what do we want to be doing in terms of strategies? Well, there's three strategies. The first one is that we understand the market's range bound. We understand the market is in a channel and then we trade it that way. The next one is we use moving averages, trends with role reversal. We'll be talking about that throughout this video. 
And then we've got channel markets with stochastic and MACD divergence. And that's another thing that we can do. So if today we'll be pretty much covering channel breakouts and we'll also be covering a whole bunch of role reversal trend based trades, bringing in the indicators together as well. And I think that's going to be some of the most interesting things. If you want to take it to the next level, you can still use the indicators we'll talk about today and then bring in divergence as well. And we've done plenty of webinars, haven't we, Ty, where we discuss MACD divergence and the power of how good that is. Yeah. We certainly have, yeah, and we will touch on it tonight because it is a very powerful source of uh, scalping and also day trading, and the two do, do go interchangeably. Some people think that you can't be a day trader and a scalper, but you, you most definitely can because sometimes scalp, uh, scalps can most most generally work out during the day that you are trading. So, yeah, they can be used interchangeably, so there's no, there's no worries about that. I'm just going to uh, mention quickly uh, while we're... Uh, just before we go into this uh, channeling approach, we've got a webinar series for Pepperstone that we're doing ahead of the election. I'm going to pop in the registration link in the chat window so people can get a chance to click on it and ask mm -hmm. us if they can't find it. Uh, this link will get you the next three weeks of webinars. Okay, so every Wednesday at the same time, we're going to be doing a series for how to trade um, into the election, looking at the major things that will be affected by uh, the election result one way or the other. So click on the link and uh, yeah, that will register for the three webinars in a row. So starting from next week, every Wednesday from 8 p.m. Melbourne time. Yeah, the election is going to be fireworks, Ty. This is an exciting time to be a trader, to be an investor because of the volatility we're seeing come back into the markets. We just had a debate today. Look what happens. We're not here to discuss that debate or discuss politics, but look what happened at the end of that. We saw volatility re-enter the market. US dollar found a beautiful technical level and bounced off that. So that actually comes from channeling as well. And we'll discuss that in just a minute. So a channel is an important pattern to understand. Tyrone, could you possibly place in the room as well, just get everyone a uh, free cheat sheet if they want access to finding out some of the patterns that we use. But patterns are very, very effective when understanding how to scalp and day trade and even swing trade in terms of the market. So we'll definitely pop that in there. So we've got channels and we've got double bottoms. We want to understand those. We also want to sometimes understand things like ascending triangles, descending triangles, of course, double bottoms and double tops, and inverse head and shoulders and head and shoulders. All of these patterns actually can affect more than you think your day trading and scalping strategies. And in fact, if you see these types of patterns on larger time frames, let's say we say a double bottom, an ascending triangle or an inverse head and shoulders, and they all break on a daily, what that actually is doing is it's giving us a clear direction in the markets. Remember, with the head and shoulders, if you're not sure on inverse head and shoulders, you want to take the distance between the head and, of course, what's called the neckline, which is this green mark here. We then extrapolate that out, and that becomes the take profit zone or the area that we want to take the market in. Now, let's say we see this on the daily. We go, oh, look, we're not interested in buying it on the daily. That's too big a pattern. I don't really care about that time frame. What is this telling us? When it closes above this zone, it's saying we are bullish for most likely statistically this length. Then the market will do this kind of thing on the smaller time frames. What if we dialed into the smaller time frames and took the pullbacks tie and that was our day trade, intraday trade? Not only will we have tighter stop losses, but we are given a clear direction by the overlying daily pattern. And this is where that top-down approach comes into it. We've actually got some live examples we can look at that we are going to discuss in this video. But remember, finding patterns on big time frames and then getting a clear directional bias is the key to breaking down multi-time frame and getting statistics into your direction. It's something that a lot of scalpers don't consider. Very, very important. Role reversal is also very key at this point. So again, let's say we had that inverse head and shoulders. I'll just draw one here using these lines. So we see the breakout here and it moves up. Then it finds some resistance, starts channeling, and then it moves up and comes back down, test this. This little test here can be role reversal. It can be where resistance was found and support was found in the overall bias direction. This support becomes a very conservative entry. And there's a couple of reasons why role reversal is so good. Because we know the resistance will act as support, what we can do then is we can place the stop loss tighter, either behind the last swing in this resistance, or if we get something like a hammer candle here, 
or we get an engulfing candle here where the, the candle engulfs the previous one, all of these allow us to have very tight stop losses on the 15 minute, five minute, or even one hour charts. Any of those charts could be giving us a lot better take profits. This is the kind of example in the market here. So imagine if we were buying these particular zones here, let's say we bought this candle, we know that our stop loss would only ever have to be below this swing here, this little low here, but the profit would at least be up until the last kind of highs. So we could be in this trade, and this could be a five minute chart, it doesn't have to be a four hour, it can be any time frame. And all of a sudden you're getting a very tight kind of entry and you're doing it off what's called market structure, a very, very key kind of thing. So price action should always form the base. We call it naked chart trading, I guess, Ty, where we basically load the charts up, we have nothing else on them, and we look for price action, we look for market structure, and we look for the way that price or the psychology is intervening in that particular area. We obviously don't want to FOMO as scalpers. We've gone over this chart so many times, but we all go through an experience. If you ever feel euphoric or you ever feel despondency, both of these particular of, I guess, the 14 stages of psychology, this is literally when you have to stop trading. It's amazing. You usually can't hold yourself back on euphoria, but you have to start stop trading on both of these feelings. Why is that? Because you're more likely to make incredible mistakes and you can go from euphoric to despondency very quickly, can't you, Ty? Oh, most definitely. And look, the thing with scalping is, you know, we talked about it all the time. And like in um, our trading room, which we'll pop a link in there for shortly, we do a lot of discussions on on scalping. And there are actually, we've got channels in there that are just for short-term daily scalps. But what you find is those emotions are the ones that will kick you in the guts if you haven't got the right risk management in place. Because scalping involves quite a, a bit of, I guess, high, not, not so much high frequency trading, but you're going to trade a lot more than if you were just a swing trader and looking for longer opportunity. So, you know, along with all of those extra trades that you're potentially putting on as a scalper, you have to have very, very sound risk management because those two emotions in particular that Thomas mentioned are the ones that will bring you undone. They're the ones that will break down your, your trading strategy and you'll break down your risk management most importantly. And they're the ones that are really going to hurt you. So they're the ones you've got to make sure you've got under control. And that's why when Thomas says, if you are feeling any of those two emotions, you must stop scalping or you must stop trading because the trading is a high frequency thing and you can bring yourself undone very, very quickly with some poorly placed trades with wrong risk management. So here, Ty, we're going to talk about market structure and correlation between a few pairs and how we're using a daily and four hour, we can build kind of an idea or a concept that we could, yes, trade swing trading wise, but on top of that, we could then use that bias to bring it down to the smaller timeframes. So here we have the US dollar, the dollar index. If you don't check out the USDX, make sure you do in your MetaTrader 5 platforms with, of course, Pepperstone. And make sure you do analysis on this every single week. You must follow the US dollar. It's incredibly important, especially at these times. So we've had a fundamental shift in the US dollar over the last week. Effectively, what happened is the US dollar was incredibly weak. We can all see that. It then found support and it did what it always does on the daily. It found market structure, must, much like a channel down here. Yeah, we have our lows, we have our resistances, and then we've got the breakout over here, the close breakout. Now, when we have the close breakout and it hits above this 50 exponential moving average, the blue line here, what it's telling us is it's telling us that we are bullish in momentum and we do expect it to come back down and potentially test it because of the conservative entry that we'll talk about. But overall, we should be relatively bullish on the US dollar. It's made a fundamental psychology change from shorting to thinking about price, to moving up. At this point, what we can do then is we can look for key zones and look for key buying opportunities. So we can then line up this 93.80 area, see that it's a 50 exponential on the daily, see that it was previous resistance and draw a range. And then we can dial into things like the four hour, into the one hour, into the 15 minute, into the 30, and we can look at this range and see how price and structure works off this zone. On top of that, we can then break it down to other currency pairs. What are the other US dollar currency pairs doing? Here's a four hour New Zealand US dollar. Now, there's no coincidence that it comes back after a massive double top on the daily here. It comes back and it tests the critical 
line here at the same point that that US dollar index is hitting the 93.80. They're both synergized together. So when we see that synergy, what we can then do is we can dial it down to the smaller time frames, get a directional bias based on the larger trends overall, and start to break it down into the smaller time frames and see whether we're interested in a trade. So we'll now bring in a few indicators that we can also use, but I think that is kind of bringing together the idea. We're basically getting a bias based on the larger time frames. Once we have that bias, we then go to the smaller time frames and look for the opportunities. So how do we find those opportunities? So let's check that out right now. So one of them is the one, two, three trading style tie. Now this is a, I guess <laughs> we've almost patented this thing by now in terms of the one, two, three, but the one, two, three trading style will work on pretty much any time frame. It'll work on a five minute, it'll work on a 15 minute, and it actually in just uses price action and market structure. Here we have a snapshot I took from earlier in the week, and this is the hour chart of the Euro dollar. So it's not a crazy big chart, it's pretty much a day trading style chart. You can also then break it down to scalping as well. We have the first touch over here of the resistance, this yellow highlighted area. We have the second touch of the resistance and it failed to break. We have the third touch of the resistance and failed to break. And then we have the fourth touch of the resistance and it failed to break. There's a couple of key things going on here. One, we had a cross of the 20 and 50 exponential moving averages, the red and the blue lines up here. Then down here, we had a cross of the 20 and the 50 exponential moving averages towards the upside. But notice also the market structure. We have buying pressure here. We've got a high, a, a low, followed by a higher low when it hits this resistance, and then it isn't really coming down. So what happens if it closes through this area and then comes back down and hits this zone? So basically closes above, breaks and closes above this one, two, three, four resistance touch, well, wouldn't that be role reversal? Previous resistance becomes support. Then on top of that, we go to the larger time frames, and you'll notice I noted over here before it happened, the 50 exponential moving average four hour was sitting around this green line. So we've basically got an, a clear target zone, but on top of that, we have a beautiful one, two, three, four resistance touch. So let's go back into the chart and have a look how the Euro actually interacted with this zone. Because this happened this week, you know, it's not that far away from when it did happen. We had the resistance, here's the first touch, here's the second touch, here's the third touch, here's the fourth touch. We see it break out and there's a few things that go on here. The first thing is that we have two bullish pin bars or hammers going into the break. If you actually ever see this and you see, this happens all the time, doesn't it, Ty? If you see this phenomenon, it's very strong. What's it telling us about market psychology? The market sold off this zone, fully rejected it off the 20 exponential moving average on the one hour here. It's then rejected it again and broken slightly higher. And then we have that clear candle close above at this point here with the one hour. So all of this is basically showing us strong bullish momentum and certainly something we'd be looking at and interested in, isn't it, Ty? Definitely. And the 20 moving average for scalpers and day traders is probably the most important moving average of them all because it's the one that's most reactive to uh, basically uh, price support and resistance, depending on which direction you're going. You'll find that no matter what time frame that you're on, especially you'll be probably focusing more on the, the smaller time frames when you are scalping, the 20 is going to be the most interactive one because it's the mean reversion moving average. So price is going to interact with that one more than any other. Not that it's going to, I mean, the five and the eights and all of the smaller ones, of course, are going to be crossed and interacting with it. But the 20 is the most significant because it's the one that generally pulls it up or sends it on its way. And you can see in that example there, you know, three touches of that 20 moving average before it eventually broke through. And when you do read the candle uh, structures, and it's really important to understand what the candles are actually telling you, because that gives you all the information you need on buyer and seller dynamics. You can see how they are interacting with that moving average and that key uh, reversal level. So it's a really, really important uh, moving average. That's the one that you really want to focus on. If the only moving average is you're going to have on your screen, make it the 20 for scalping. So what we can then do, Ty, is we can break it down to even a smaller time frame. Notice when it closes above here on the smaller time frame, it's a 15 minute chart. It then comes back and it tests this zone. 
Now, what I wanna do is I wanna bring it down to a five minute chart. And we're gonna talk about an indicator in just a few minutes. And that is, of course, some people's favorite, the stochastic indicator. So here we have the stochastic set to a 533, pretty fast kind of speed. And we're targeting the key zone or the key area. So we've put together a bit of a story here. Firstly, we have a one, two, three, four touch resistance on the one hour. It's broken through and it's made a new high, confirmed close, and then it's pulled back and the stochastic has become oversold with a cross at the exact area. So what this is basically saying is, is we've got strong momentum, we've got stochastic oversold while we're looking at the direction of, of course, the trend. So we're getting potential value here and we can certainly get involved with this trade. So a few things we can do. One, we don't have to have a very big stop loss. Where do we place our stop loss? Behind the last market structure. So we only have to place it down here realistically, or we can go even crazier and place it just below the lows here because of the small five minute engulf. So you could effectively scalp this area by pinpointing statistics in your kind of, I guess, advantage. And then you could take a position all the way up to here or potentially take it the whole distance to that 50 exponential moving average on the four hour. So remember where that was. The 50 exponential moving average on the four hour was over here. There's quite a lot of pips in this zone. If we look at the amount of pips here, we're looking at a potential scalp of around 32 points. That's not bad. You know, there's nothing wrong with 32 points. Yes, we've had to do a bit of analysis, but it's quite simple, isn't it, Ty, when you put it all together? It is. And that's uh, and that's probably the high, what's highlighting of what Thomas was saying earlier about doing um, the top-down approach on your analysis. Although you're not actually trading a four-hour chart or even a daily chart, potentially, if you're only going for scalping trades, what those charts are doing is identifying the key zones that you need to be aiming for, either from a take profit standpoint or also from a protection standpoint of where you're going to put your stop losses. So although you're not necessarily going to be actually trading off the four hour or the daily charts um, when you go down to the smaller time frames to scalp, what you are doing is isolating the important zones that may not be as obvious or even in the line of sight on your chart when you are looking at a 15 minute chart or a one hour chart. It's the dailies and the four hours that really bring home those key levels. Absolutely, Ty, this is the key kind of zone and you can see the market told you it's the key zone. Instantly blasts up, hits that area. That's what happens with the market. They fill zones. When a key level is broken, often it will fill the zone. What we're doing here though, is we're not preempting the close above. We're not preempting this. We're taking the conservative entry. And this conservative entry will be the difference between you making maybe a one-to-one -one trade and you making a five-to-one -one trade. Because what you're able to do with the conservative entry is have a much tighter stop loss. You place your stop loss behind either the candle confirmation at the zone, or you start to trigger in maybe a market structure just behind it or you use a moving average. So you can use three different things to have a much tighter stop loss and you can see the aggressiveness that it moves forward. So there's just an example on the Euro US dollar breaking down a few timeframes. We could also do a very similar thing this week on the Euro yen. Here we have the Euro yen. It's a clear resistance kind of zone here. We've got again, multiple touches to this area. If we go to the one hour, it'll become very clear. So again, we're using a one hour chart here. We've got clear resistances. We have a very similar setup than the Euro US dollar. It breaks through a key moving average that it hasn't done as it closes above. And look how it comes back and tests this zone. Again, it's a multiple one, two, three, four touches area. Multiple touches comes down, finds support on that area instantly, and then rocket ships up. It's understanding and being patient, kind of like, I guess, like an animal of the wild, really, <laughs> that you're waiting for the prey of the market, aren't you, Ty? Yeah. And it is true. And probably one of the most important things, just even highlighting that chart, we'll just go back to that chart for a second. You can see that that move obviously exploded past that resistance point. But when you, even though it has gone, when you go back to a 15 minute chart on this uh, very pair, you can see all of the opportunities that we were talking about. We'll just pop to a 15 minute chart for a second. And you can see here, Look at the touches. After it's broken that zone, you're wondering, how am I going to get involved in this trade? Well, exactly what we talked about with the moving averages. Look how many times it touched the 20 moving average on the way up. Every single one of those was an opportunity to take this long. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. You're absolutely looking for the break of the resistance zone on the bigger time frame. And then when it does, you go down to the smaller time frames and basically trade off the 
the mean reversion, which is the 20 moving average, this is why I said it's one of the most important moving averages because it's the one, and this might look you know, obvious and you might say, well, you know, it's, it's all good in hindsight. This all happened in the last day. And we can go to 100 charts and we can show you the same example every single day. It does it all the time. So when, when you get these breakouts, the 20 moving average is the most important one to look for because it's the one that will give you the re-entry points once it has broken a particular zone. Another thing you can do, Ty, you mentioned the 20 a few times. If you're not sure that it's going to be a thing that's being supported multiple times, you see it happen once, you see it happen two, two times, the third time, the fourth time, and the fifth time are all very takeable. The sixth time and the seventh time are also all very takeable. Eventually it will fail, like up here, but once you see it happen two times in a row, it becomes the self-fulfilling prophecy, it becomes a statistically high chance that that zone is going to be respected and that we're going to find the level of support or, of course, resistance that we want. So when we're talking about patterns, we're talking about, of course, price action breaking, everything like that. Confirmation is always the key. And remember the conservative entry where it comes back to the role reversal, it comes back to the break, break zone of the pattern is always the higher probability trade from a bigger kind of risk reward standpoint. So make sure, of course, uh, pop in that thing again, Ty, if anyone missed it, the free cheat sheet uh, pattern sheet that we provide at fxevolution.com and you can see some of the ones that we definitely recommend. So what are three indicators we can use for scalpers? Well, we talked about how price action and market structure is one of the most important things. We've already talked about moving averages. The moving averages that we think are really, really great on all timeframes are the 20 exponential, the 50 exponential, and the 200 simple moving average. Then we've also got MACD. We'll be using, you can use MACD pretty much in range bound markets. You'll be wanting to look at MACD divergence. We won't cover that too much today, but what I would suggest is go to Pepperstone's YouTube channel, search in MACD as one of the webinar topics in there, and you will find, of course, webinar topics we've done covering MACD in more detail. Then you've got stochastic. Now I've put in brackets range bound because stochastic overbought and oversold are generally used in range bound markets. Here's an example of, of course, how most people will use stochastic. You'll notice before I talked about stochastic in a trend and we'll talk about that more in a minute. But basically if we had stochastic when it's over the 80 and traditionally under the 20 zone, we want to of course sell when it's over the 80 and buy when it's under the 20. That's what you traditionally do. You can see here the sell points where it crosses, these two lines cross in the overbought or the oversold and the entrance points that you get. Where I like to look at it a little bit differently though is stochastic in trending markets. Now, would you in a market that's going like this on a five minute chart, should you be looking at stochastic overbought sells? No. You never want to do that. Why? Because stochastic's more of an indicator inside of range bound markets, it's an oscillator. So if you're looking at stochastic overbought and then saying, yeah, I'm gonna sell here and I'm gonna sell here and I sell here, this is the rookie mistake most people make. What you want to be doing instead is using stochastic more as a tool in the pullback section to see whether it's oversold. Because remember, trend is your friend and you can afford to be actually pretty wrong a lot of the time and the trend will actually pull you in the direction. So if we were hitting a 20 exponential moving average here at the same time as the stochastic oscillator was underneath the oversold area and it was crossing up, that crossing up with potentially maybe a hammer candle as well off this zone, these three reasons plus trend, so we've got three reasons there, you always wanna have three separate reasons are going to be enough to get us in that scalp. It could be a day trade, it could be a scalp, it could be anything, it's going to be enough to get us in the zone. And that's the important stochastic. If we're gonna use it in trend, we wanna use it in the direction of trend, not against it. Ty, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I remember when we used to trade stochastic years ago, we certainly did some of the bad mistakes and I'm sure many people out there tonight may have done that. It is understanding um, what the market is doing is the most important thing, there's no question about that. And having a good understanding of the stochastic and MACD. Now, if you don't know much about these indicators, definitely check out the Pepperstone uh, library in the YouTube channel because we've done yeah, several webinars that explain MACD and also stochastic in depth. So if you're not familiar with those indicators or you'd like to know more about them, certainly check out the Pepperstone library because uh, we've got some really good information uh, in that. But 
the most important thing with any indicator, uh, and that, that's moving averages included, is understanding mm. what the trend is doing. And if you understand what the trend is doing, what price action is actually doing, you can apply the indicator correctly. And I think that's probably where most people come unstuck because they're applying the indicator in the wrong situation. You've got to look at indicators a little bit like a toolbox. Um, you, un you need to understand firstly, it's a bit like if you're going to uh, work on a car, for instance, okay, you're going to uh, change a part on a car, you need a certain tool for that. You know, you're taking the carburetor off um, on, a, on an older type car, you're going to need a certain amount of spanners for that particular job. Trading is no different. When you understand that you're scalping a certain market, you know a, a particular time frame is trending in your direction. You need to go to the tools that are going to help you achieve what you need to in that. There's no point taking a screwdriver when you need a shifter. OK, and that's exactly how indicators work. You need to apply the right indicator for the right job and keep them in your toolbox. And when you do understand what price action is telling you and what you uh, what you see in the trends, then you can apply the right indicator. It will make all the, the difference to you in your success. So a few people have uh, been talking about pin bars and hammers quite a lot in the chat and just in discussions in general recently. And I just wanted to quickly bring up a couple of interesting points around that. So here we have silver and we've got silver on the daily again, just to give us a bit of a directional kind of idea. So there's a couple of misconstrued ideas about how people trade these pin bars or hammers. So here we've got a pin bar or hammer coming off a trend line that we could draw if we wanted to through all the bases. But the most important thing about this is that when the market closes above like it does here, it triggers a bunch of buys and you'll notice that the market then has a nice bullish candle after that. Do we want to be doing a buy straight away after this candle? You don't want to be doing that because the market hasn't made a new high yet. Notice the candle after this ends up being bearish. We don't have the follow through on that. When you see follow through on particular bullish hammers or candles in general, that's the kind of key that you want to be looking at. You want to see market momentum continue in that direction. So I think that's one of the things that you want to always see and make sure you pay attention to in the markets, isn't it, Ty? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's, again, just understanding that price action. Once you understand price action, it will open up your mind to, you know, what the market is actually doing at particular points in time. And that goes for a lot of people think, you know, price action is only important in the longer term timeframes, but it's actually most important in scalping. So scalping and day trading, understanding what price action is actually doing is probably the most important thing, aside from any indicators and aside from support and resistance zones, understanding what the buyers and sellers are doing on any given candle is the most important aspect of scalping. So another thing that we mentioned before is news. So when it comes to scalping, let's say we understood market structure. We understood that the market was in a range bound area. Often before news, what will a market do? Well, let's say this is a one hour chart. Often the market in a range bound will come up to a resistance up here or a support down here just before that key bit of news. And the news is often what spikes or breaks it through that zone. So never be surprised when you see red news or high impact news that the price action will actually push to a direction, either a resistance or support. When the close happens, depending on how that news ends up forming, often that pushes it through with the volume and then we get the pullback to the conservative zone where of course we have that one, two, three, and I definitely recommend you can remember one, two, three in your scalping and day trading and swing concepts. And then it pulls back to this resistance, becomes support, because after the news has come out, kind of it cools off. We sometimes see that in stocks or indices, some big news comes out, it goes crazy up in a direction, and then it cools off over the next couple of days as the news comes out, people take profit, that type of thing. That pushes it back down, takes out stop losses when people accidentally enter up here. Again, I'm sure many people have accidentally <laughs> entered through news. We all have. And then it pulls back, hits that zone. And then, of course, that's when we want to start looking at scalps in the smaller timeframes when it comes back to that conservative entry. So economic news is really important. This week on Friday, there will be non-farm payrolls. It's one of those events you usually don't want to scalp into. Awesome to watch. We'll actually be doing a, a, a stream on that one as well. but um, that one is on uh, FX Evolution's YouTube. But in terms of things that you want to do is you want to watch it, you want to understand it, but you don't necessarily want to trade it because it's just too crazy. When the news comes out, it'll be up, down, all around, and often it reverses 100 pips each way because of the nature of that information. 
when we're trading scalping as well, we want to be smart with our risk reward. We want to be diligent. We want to be like a robot. We want to always be taking over one-to-one -one trades. And what I mean by that is if you risk $100, you want to try to make $100 at least. We don't want to at be least. making $70, do we, Ty, when we I risk $100? Because your stats have to be so much better. Absolutely. So ideally, again, yeah. the conservative entries will get us the better better money. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, most definitely. So, look, we're getting quite a few questions about um, looking at particular pairs in the live market. We're going to be doing yep. that in our webinar, which starts in 20 minutes. So I'm going to pop the link in the chat window. So for anyone who wants to join our, our webinar in the next um, 20 minutes, we're going to do a live analysis, which we do every Wednesday night. And we're going to be talking about a lot of the concepts, but we're going to be applying it to the live markets over a, a big amount of pairs. So if you have any pairs you'd like us to check out, just yeah, click on that link and join our webinar, which starts in 20 minutes. And we're going to be doing a lot of that analysis in the next uh, webinar for that one. So Ty, I'm just going to answer a couple of quick questions that have come in here. I know a lot have already been answered and thank you so much for your questions. By the way, if you want to put questions in the room, do so now and uh, we'll answer them to the best of our ability just to, just to kind of get whatever your question is. Usually there's another hundred people out there that want that answered. So one of the questions here or one of the answers is Mario says, I use RSI and ZigZag. So look, we've specifically picked those particular indicators because they all show us a separate kind of thing. Now with RSI, it's a great indicator, but we'd probably use RSI instead of maybe stochastic, wouldn't we, Ty? We'd potentially bring it in and use it instead of one of the others. You don't want too many indicators on your charts. If you have too many, often a lot of them will all agree with each other. And that's a big problem we found when we were looking at trade ideas and trade indicators over the years. What are your thoughts on that one, Ty? Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, we've tried. We've tried a lot of them. We we apply. It's a little bit like uh, refining your toolbox. I know we keep referring to the indicators as a toolbox. We uh, work with the indicators that we know apply to a particular market that we're looking at. At the end of the day, the market's only going to be doing one one of three things. It's either going sideways, it's going up, or it's going down. Okay, and we apply the tools that we can use for any of those given situations. There are millions of indicators out there. There's no question about that. Everybody knows that there's all different ones. None of them are necessarily wrong or incorrect, but it's more about understanding them. And I guess my advice to anybody who's looking at indicators that we haven't talked about tonight is they're fine to use as long as you understand fundamentally what they're actually doing and how mm -hmm. you're applying them to a particular market you're looking at. And most importantly, to the price action that you're looking at. If you can make them work and you understand how they're working in terms to the up or down or sideways movements, then there's no wrong answer or no wrong indicator. It's all about understanding them. Okay, another couple of questions here. Do you have to wait for a 20 EMA and 50 EMA crossovers from Sahail? No, you don't. Def you definitely don't have to wait for those at all. We mentioned the 20 or mean reversion is one of the key kind of points that you wanna be looking at. The 2050 cross can just be a bit of a cheat or hack for showing you direction of the market if you're not sure. One of the bigger things that we like to do, if you're not sure on trend direction in general, you can always <laughs> load up a daily 200 and or any kind of 200 simple moving average. And if price is above that point, you can say, okay, we're looking at longs. And if price is below that point, you can say, I'm only looking at shorts. Instantly, you've made a cheat decision on whether you're long or short biased in the market. And what that will help you do is be usually with the trend. We do not want to, even when scalping, the 5% difference that might be there when you're taking the direction of the trend with your system and taking the direction against trend with your system makes huge difference over hundreds of trades. And that's what you're going to be doing. Okay, so here's another question from Adam. I'm going to answer this straight away here, Ty. Not exactly related to TA, however, what is a good average percentage profit for day for a trader? So never look at a day trade in terms of you want to make 50 pips a day or 100 pips a day. Everyone does that. It's a bad idea. What you want to do is average it out maybe over a quarter, over a six-month period, and then see how you go. I think, look, if you get generally around 3% to 4% a week, which is very, very dealable, Remember, three or four percent with 0.5 percent risk is actually eight percent to some people, or 16 percent to others, depending on your risk management. So, if you could get a few percent a week, you'd be doing very well, and that could be just on standard risk management. Then, what you can do is you can create better and stronger trades by maybe putting a little bit more leverage, a little bit more risk against things. But it's about getting consistent at the start, and it's not a race 
it's a slow marathon. That's how trading is. You're not usually going to get rich in a day. You're going to get rich over a slower period of time, compound it through. And remember, if you're making a few percent a week, you're beating fund managers by a huge amount. There's a lot of reasons why you can do that because fund managers have a lot of restraints on them, as Tyron and I well know. But overall, yeah, you don't want to necessarily put yourself to high targets because the power of compounding will get you there. Uh, can you play, explain more the stochastic indicator? Definitely go to YouTube and go to Pepperstone's channel. We go through stochastic in a lot of details. Uh, is Ichimoku? Ichimoku is fine as well. I think you'll find that just general price action though and keeping the charts clean is going to be one of the best. Yeah, uh, London Open, one. Paul. Uh, sorry, I was going to answer Paul's yeah. question about London Open. Yeah, London Open is a, a very uh, solid uh, scalping opportunity for a lot of people. Market Opens are definitely important. Probably the most important thing about Market Opens is actually being aware when they are opening. That's probably the most important thing. Uh, you can definitely scalp them, but you need to be a little bit more uh, savvy in watching them because they do get often... Um, big breakout, fake out moves, especially in the first 15, 20 minutes. So you really need to understand that you are in a market open and trade accordingly. Probably do a bit of practice if you haven't done it before, before you start jumping in. Uh, do you suggest trailing stop loss and scalping from Kyle? No, we don't, Kyle. Uh, we would suggest instead you use a moving average behind maybe a mean reversion. Let's say you see the 20 exponential moving average on a 15 minute time frame acting as support throughout trend. So we have a trend, Trends up and oh, <laughs> probably want to draw a trend up and we have the moving average behind it. If price continues to come to that moving average, why not act a 35 behind it or something like that that hasn't been hit and trail it that way? Market adaptive is the key. When you're using a fixed trail, you're using a fixed level. It's not market adaptive. Uh, Giorgio wants to analyze the US dollar Swiss. I think I, I might actually indulge loading the US dollar Swiss quickly here, Ty, just because if you look at the US dollar Swiss on a larger time frame, it's obviously come back very similar to the US dollar to a key point today. So it came back, tested this area, it's hit the 20 exponential moving average here on the four hour and then sold off a bit. We'll be doing that a little bit more in the webinar after this. But uh, yeah, it's a very, very key point for it. Obviously, a break low of this zone is, is incredibly key. And if that happens, you'd see further bearish momentum. At this point, we're just trying to get a close above here to show further bullish momentum. And we'll go Definitely. through that very soon. Sure. Uh, now, don't right, forget, Ty, everyone. Yep. I was going to say, just don't forget about the um, the three-part series that starts next week for the Purpose Stone. I've po posted a link in there as, as well. Register mm -hmm. nice and early because f spots are filling up and these webinars are getting really large. So register early. The one registration will get you for the three weeks. So you just basically get your reminders once you've logged in once. But it's going to be really good because we are going to focus on the individual things that will be impacted. They're going to be really, really good webinars. So yeah, be sure to jump in if you get the time or at the very least register so you can get the, uh, the replays and you can watch them on YouTube not long after. Uh, two other things I'll just say, there's a quick Q&A at the end of this webinar. If you could answer some of the quick questions there, just give us feedback on what you thought of tonight's webinar. It's always great to hear your feedback. Remember your feedback goes around a lot of shaping what kind of webinars we do and helping us get a bit of an idea on what you want to see more of. So make sure you answer that. Uh, another thing, Ty, we have got a 24-hour close of month uh, September special here and this is obviously 25% off our technical analysis masterclass and three months access as well as a special part of September to our private trading chat room. If you're interested in doing that or interested in finding out more about that you can go to fxevolution.com and we'll post in the room right now the link to that discount as well already applied but you can use coupon was it September 2020 spec and if you put that in on the Technical Analysis Masterclass, you'll get 25% off the whole thing for the next 24 hours. All right, thank you very much, everybody. We hope you enjoyed it today. Obviously, one of the things to take away from this is price action, price action, price action, market structure, understanding the bigger timeframes, breaking it down, and then bringing in key indicators. If you like RSI more, usually use between two to three indicators that are trend-based or range-based. Don't use any more than that because they'll all be showing you the same things otherwise. So try to get separate indicators that show you separate ideas. That's the key. Definitely. 
the one thing I will say too, it's we've been it's been asked a lot tonight, but I'm just going to say it. If anybody wants to watch the replay, you've, you've had uh, parts of this webinar that you've missed. It will be on the Pepperstone YouTube channel uh, tomorrow around 11 a.m. It's usually so just ju uh, jump onto the Pepperstone YouTube channel, and this webinar will be in uh, available in the full replay. So yeah, just jump on, and you'll be able to watch it there. Thanks very much, everybody. We'll see you, uh, is it next week, Ty? We start with this election stuff? Yep, we start next week for the uh, three-part series, and hopefully we might see you all in about 10 minutes where we do the live market analysis. I'll tell you what, I am pumped about this election series. This is going to be a lot of fun. I remember 16, what a wild day. Make sure I even took the day off and I was watching it completely. <laughs> yeah, all right, see you, everyone. <laughs> see you, everyone. Uh, catch up, bye.